We got shirts on sale. Express your evolution and starter Pokemon love by buying an evolution family shirt in which one starter shirt? Link will be in the description below. Around three years ago, I made the best team for Kanto. It was a huge hit and people seem to really enjoy the series. Even now, I am continuing using the other starters and you guys seem to really enjoy that. To keep it short, the reason I have not been uploading the alternate starter best teams lately is because I got tired of doing them due to the stress behind it all. Trying to get one out every two weeks was difficult because of my schooling and other life stuff happening. I know I did some other ones like from time to time, but it still was a pain to get out because it was really stressful. But today, with me finally being on summer vacation, we can get started. So yeah, best team for Kanto. Three years ago I made it, and I thought I did a really good job with it at the time. It seemed like a really good, great team, that as the years went by and I started doing the best teams with a different formatting style, I realized it could have been made a lot better. The original best team for Kanto had no movesets and was nowhere near as in-depth of a guide as present day best teams are. Trust me, I am aware that I have made errors in some past best teams, but compare more present teams to the originals and there is obviously a big drastic change of quality. Pretty much what I am trying to say is, I want to make a remastered Kanto best team with the same mechanics I use now is very similar to how we made the remastered Sinnoh team, except I am not going to only be using one game. This best team will still revolve around both Fire Red and Leaf Green, and this time around, there will be no version exclusives. There will also be movesets provided as well, and as usual, no egg moves. No TM moves post game, nor any tutor moves post game. This team will only cover up to the end of the Elite Four as well. Fire Red and Leaf Green's post game is relatively easy, so I think you guys can cover that yourself. This entire time, I talked about what I was going to change about the Kanto best team, but I didn't even explain what a best team is, so here I go. A best team is a team of six Pokemon that is designed for the absolute best performance for its said Pokemon game. The team revolves around a best starter choice and is then made into a team revolving around that best said starter, in our case Bulbasaur. Each team member is designed to do well against certain gym leaders, the elite four members, champion, rival, and the evil team leaders. In the end, we have a team that does well against the most important battles in the game. When making this team, we do provide movesets for each of the Pokemon. We include TM moves, but we do not allow egg moves, and our post-game tutor moves, you guys have already heard this. Except one more thing I'm not going to be doing in this playthrough is I'm not going to be using legendary Pokemon. Legendary Pokemon make the game too easy and it's easy to cheese things. To me, anyone with a brain can just pick up the legendary birds and use them, especially because they're automatically level 50. My level 100 Moltres had no problem beating the Elite Four. Yeah, I'm talking about you guys in the comment section. You, you, you all know who you are. Anyways, that is pretty much what a best team is. This is literally word for word what I said for the Sinnoh Remastered team, so this is pretty much an up to date version of the best team format. I also know that there will be new team members to the team, as well as some old familiar faces you guys have seen before. So let's give them a warm welcome with this brand new remastered Kanto best team. Alright. Best starter is Venusaur. Venusaur is better than Charizard and Blastoise in a Kanto playthrough and has better matchups. Venusaur is also my personal favorite of the Kanto starters. Ivysaur has the best middle stage evolution design and Bulbasaur is super adorable. But yeah, if you guys want more details about how Venusaur is the best, watch your eyes on Exilian's best starter video, yada yada yada, if you guys know about all that stuff already. Starting off the first moveset of this remastered best team, we have Razor Leaf for Stab and the Elite Seed growth and toxic. Razor Leaf, because to me it's the best grass move it can get that doesn't have insufficient PP uses, whereas other moves like Frenzy Plant, Giga Drain, and Solar Beam either have to recharge, have 5 PP, or has to charge it for an entire turn. I understand there's Sunny Day, but he wants to set up two moves for Solar Beam. Razor Leaf can be learned as an Ivysaur at level 22. Growth is there for extra power and raises the special attack by one stage. Growth is on the level 41. Toxic is great because of Stall, and that can be obtained from Koga after you beat him. Lead Seed can be learned as a Bulbasaur at level 7. With the combination of Lead Seed and Toxic, you're going to stall out those bulky Pokemon, it will make your life a lot easier. Also, I should mention Venusaur doesn't get a good poison type attack until post game. The Sludge Bomb TM isn't available until 5 Island. Venusaur should have learned more offensive poison type attacks in its move pool. It sucks that it doesn't have that. With Razor Leaf, Venusaur does great against Brock, Misty, Giovanni's ground types is set from Nido King and Nido Queen. Lorelei's team is set from Jinx, be careful those ice attacks by the way. Bruno's rock types and Blue's Rhydon. Venusaur actually does well for a grass type Pokemon. Kanto is one of those rare cases where the grass type actually does decent. I'd switch its poison type and could have gotten more use. Well, it wouldn't be a best team for Kanto without Nido King. That's right, this MVP is back once again to help us all out on our Kanto journey. I won't get into too much detail since this is like the 73rd time we've had Nido King on, so if you want a more detailed explanation, check out some of the previous Kanto best teams. In short, Nido King is just a powerful monster with pretty solid stats and a nice arsenal moves to choose from. It definitely gets better in later generations after the physical special split, but even without the split, it will shred your opponent's team easily. First, you'll be getting Nido Ran on Route 3 at level 6. The last time I said you could get on Route 20, too, when that's actually false because in Fire Emblem of Green you cannot get it on that route next to Viridian City. So yes, it is on Route 3 at level 6 
after Pewter City after Brock. Now this is going to be a little bit harder for Leaf Green players as the encounter rate for Nidoran male is only 1%, while it's 14% in Pokemon Fire Red. But trust me, it's definitely worth it, so just tough it out. By the time you get to Cerulean, it should be ready to evolve in the Nidorino at level 16, which you can then evolve immediately into Nidoking with the Moonstone after. There are no moves you have to wait for, you can just evolve it immediately, which I think is really cool. A Moonstone can be found in the first four Mount Moons, so no worries there. And just like that, you have a very powerful, fully evolved Pokemon all before the second badge. By this point, you should understand all very well why. Nido King makes many of the best teams, especially if Kanto is involved. So for a final move set, we have Dig, which will then be replaced by Earthquake later on, Thunderbolt, Surf, and finally Megahorn. Now I know Surf and Thunderbolt are special moves, while Nido King is largely a physical attacker, but its special attack stat isn't that bad, and it helps to have Surf for getting around as well as the coverage that both it and Thunderbolt provide. Until you're able to get all these final moves, just use moves like Double Kick and Thrash for standard battles. Both are level up moves with Double Kick being learned at level 12 as a Nidoran, and Thrash learned at level 22. So now on how to get the final moves. For Dig, you get the TM from a rocket grunt behind the robbed house in Cerulean City. You'll use Dig until you're able to teach Earthquake, which is given to you by Giovanni after you defeat him in Viridian City. The Thunderbolt TM is able to be purchased at the Rocket Game Corner in Celadon City for 4,000 coins. The Surf HM is obtained from the man at the Secret House in Area 3 of the Safari Zone, and finally Megahorn is a level up move learned at level 43. With all these moves, Nido Kane is well against Lieutenant Surge's entire team, Koga's Muck, if you want you can take on Silverian's team, but I wouldn't recommend it, that sounds kind of silly, Blaine's team, Giovanni's entire team with Surf and Dig. You could try taking Laurel Lasting with Thunderbolt and Megahorn, but with Sabrina, I wouldn't recommend it. Both Bruno's Onyx, Agatha's Golbat and Arbok, Lance's Gyarados and Aerodactyl, and finally your rival's entire team. Yeah, I wasn't joking when I said Nido King was a beast. With the right moves, it can easily body at least half the region by itself, which is why it will usually find its way on a Kanto best team. Coming back to the best team is our previous flyer, Dodrio. Dodrio can be found as early as Route 16, but right next to Celadon City after you cut down the tree. Dodrio is here because, in my opinion, is the best flyer in Kanto. It outclasses Sphero and Pidgeot by a landslide. For Pidgeot, it just lacks moves and its stats are nowhere near as great as Dodrio's. Sphero is a little closer in stats in earlier game, but Dodrio still has 20 more physical attack stat and 10 more speed stat than Sphero actually does. Dodrio also has a better selection of normal type attacks versus the other two birds. Aerodactyl is also also another option, but it's too late game, that's why I don't want that. Those are the reasons why I believe Dodrio is the best flyer, excluding legendaries. Usually flyers don't perform well on best teams and are kind of scared to space out fly, but Dodrio actually puts in its share of work. I can attest to this because I actually used it a lot in my playthrough of the original best team for Kanto, and it did pretty well for me. It's got two 100 plus stats that make it a hard hitting monster for Kanto. Dodrio's moveset is as vanilla as you're gonna see. Drill Peck, Fly, Return and Stealing. Drill Pet can be learned at level 47. Until you get that attack, you can use Aerial Ace, which can be obtained on the route next to Cerulean City on the way to Rock Tunnel. Fly is, well, Fly, we need that to get around. Why have Fly and Drill Pet or Aerial Ace? Because Fly is a two turn attack. Fly is annoying to use, it's only there for convenience, trust me on that one. Return is one of the best normal attacks in the game, and that can be found on Route 12, right below Lavender Town in the lookout area on the second floor. Tri-Attack is another option if you want to choose that one. Tri-Attack can be learned at level 21 by Doduo, and there is a chance for the opponent to be frozen, paralyzed, or burned. Mythic, it's special attack! Wrong. Normal types are physical in this gen sport. Steel Wing is here for coverage, and that can be found in the Safari Zone on the way to the Surf HM. With all these moves, Dodrid is great against Erika, Bruno's Fighting Types, and Blue's Executive. There may not be a lot of trainers on that list, but being a normal type doesn't mean it's bad. If you're able to land some returns off with Dodrio, you're going to be hitting like a truck, especially if return is maxed out. Normal type has a lot of really powerful attacks, and despite them not being able to pull off super effective hits, they can do well in any kind of situation. It doesn't really matter. Next up, we have a newcomer to the best team series, being Hitmonlee. Now Hitmonlee is taking Jolteon's place, and the reason being is simply that it serves more purpose than an electric Pokemon does. Jolteon is really only super useful against Lorelei, while Hitmonlee, as you will see soon enough, can be more beneficial to this team. Now you might also be asking, why Hitmonlee over Hitmonchan? Three reasons. It's faster, has a better move pull for this generation, and it hits harder. A lot of the time with these best teams, speed really matters. And while Hitmonchan isn't the slowest in the world, Hitmonlee's 11 point higher speed stat will really help out. There's also the fact that its attack stat is 15 points higher than Hitmonchan's, which really helps get those wins a bit easier. And finally, the last point of contention is the move pull. While yes, Hitmonchan's move pull is more diverse from a type standpoint, it doesn't really do it any good in the third generation as we have not received the physical special split, meaning most of these moves are special. And take a look at that special stat. Yeah, 35 isn't going to be useful to me at all, Chief. 
So to me, it's only natural that Hitmonlee makes the cut. Now I guess the one downside is that it has pretty abysmal defense stat as a trade-off for the higher speed and attack, but I really do feel like the pros outweigh the cons in this case. So how you get it is real obvious to anyone that has ever played a Kanto game. You simply fight your way through the fighting dojo in Saffron City, and you get to choose between it and Hitmonchan as a prize. It's going to be a little underleveled being level 25, but if you get it at around the time you go to sell it on City, it shouldn't be that bad. If anything, it will probably be stronger. Now, the moveset for Hitmonlee is real simple and will require virtually no work. We have Brick Brick, High Jump Kick, Rock Tomb, and Bulk Up. Right off the bat, Hitmonlee has two of the four moves on it being Brick Brick and High Jump Kick. So all I need to do is replace the other two moves. Why have two fine type attacks? Because High Jump Kick can come in handy in a lot of really interesting situations. I know I usually discourage it, but I mean, when you have Brick Brick and High Jump Kick and you're kind of limited to the options you have, you don't really have a choice. Next up is Rock Tomb. Rock Tomb is obtained from Brog after you defeat him. And lastly, Bulk Up's TM is found on the seventh floor of Silph Co. So you'll have it soon after you get him on Lee for the most part. So with all these moves in mind, Hitmonlee does well against Blaine's entire team with Rock Tomb. Giovanni's Kangaskhan from the Silph Co. battle followed by his Rhydon and Rhyhorn battle in the gym. Lorelei's Dugong, Cloyster, and Lapras. Bruno's Onyx, Lance's Gyarados, Aerodactyl, and Dragonite. And finally, your rivals Rhydon, Gyarados, and his Charizard. However, uh, just be careful, they're flying Pokemon, so yeah. See, I told you that Hitmonlee is pretty good though, and definitely is an improvement from Jolteon in my opinion. It really hurts me to say it, but facts are facts. Sorry, Jolteon. We have yet another veteran returning to the best team, being none other than Snorlax. I swear, Snorlax has been on just as many best teams as King has, so it should really be no surprise to see it again. It's a strong and beefy Pokemon with a solid move pull, and of course it's here. Now I know that Tauros is also another option, but I mean, I think Snorlax is better just because of the bulk. Now to get Snorlax is the same as usual. You can get two Encanto by playing the Poke Flute to wake it up, one on Route 12 and one on Route 16. It doesn't really matter which one you get, but I would just recommend getting the one on Route 12, as it's on the way towards the sixth member of the team. Now for its moveset, it's going to be pretty much the same as the last few best teams. We're doing Headbutt, which is followed by Body Slam, Shadow Ball, Brick Break, and Strength. Last time we had Seismic Toss and Yawn on Snorlax, but Brick Break is just a more solid move. Yawn was for annoyance, but honestly, it's not necessary. Strength is needed, as well as providing powerful stab. So Headbutt is already on Snorlax when you capture it, and Body Slam is learned via level up at level 33. Shadow Ball's TM is obtained at the Rocket Game Corner for 4,500 coins. I know you're going to have to go to the Game Corner a lot, but that's where most of the good TMs come from. Brick Break's TM is located on the first floor of the SSN or can be bought at the Celadon department store. And finally, strength is given to you by the Warden after you give him his golden teeth. Snorlax can do some serious damage to pretty much anyone in Kanto, but with these moves, Snorlax does best against Sabrina's team aside from Venomoth, Giovanni's Kangaskhan and Silphco, and then later his Rhyhorn and Rhydon at the gym, Lorelei's team, Bruno's Onyx, Agatha's team aside from Arbok, and finally your rivals Alakazam, Rhydon, and Exeggutor. Yeah, Snorlax is pretty well in Kanto. It's good to see you on the team again, buddy. Making her return to the Kanto Best Team series is Nicki Minaj. Ah, uh -huh, Missy, you're funny, huh? Yeah, whatever. Jinx is back, though, and I'm glad she is because I'm going to prove to you guys that you do not need a water Pokemon in Kanto. Let's take a look at all these Pokemon across Kanto. Most of the Pokemon that are rock types are also ground types. Ground types are also weak against ice. The same applies to grass Pokemon as well. What about fire types? We got Nidoking, and not to mention Nidoking also has access to Surf. So we don't need a water Pokemon. A water Pokemon's purpose on the best team is to mainly use Surf. Am I wrong? We got a Pokemon that already knows Surf, so what's the problem? An Ice Pokemon can do a water type Pokemon's job better in Kanto. Not to mention Jinx also has that Psychic Typing along with great speed and special attack. That Psychic Typing comes in handy for all the Poison types scattered across the region. Most of the Poison type Pokemon also have Levitate or some kind of immunity to the ground type attacks, so Jinx thrives. I think I can say that Jinx is the MVP of our team as it takes out most of the Pokemon across the region with ease having both the typings of Ice and Psychic. A lot of Pokemon weaknesses in Kanto are these two types. Where to get Jinx is in Cerulean City. There is a house next to the Pokemon Center who is offering his Jinx for a Poliwhirl. Last time I told you guys you need the Old Rod. That is actually false. I'm a doo-doo head who messed up. To get Poliwhirl, you're going to have to beat the Rocket Game Corner and then head over to Lavender Town Tower. Next, pick up the Poke Float from Mr. Fuji, head south from Lavender Town down Route 12, wake up Snorlax, capture that for the fifth team member, and there should be a house later on down that route. Go in and pick up a Super Rod. Then fly back to Vermilion City, go up to Route 6 with a Fishing Rod and fish for a Poliwhirl. I'm not sure what the level cap of what Poliwhirl has to be in order for Jinx to keep Lovely Kiss, but make sure that your Poliwhirl is at least level 26 the highest. Any other levels above that, I am not sure, feel free to experiment. I traded for Jinx with that level, and then still retain Lovely Kiss. Lovely Kiss is a great attack, as I will talk about that momentarily in the moveset. Jinx's moveset is crazy good. We got Ice Beam, Psychic, 
Lovely Kiss, and Calm Mind. It literally sounds like a competitive moveset. Ice Beam can be obtained from the Rocket Game Corner after winning 4,000 coins and buying it. Ice Punch can be used earlier and that's 75 base power. If you don't want to get Ice Beam, use Ice Punch. It's pretty much the same exact thing, it's at 15 power or less. I like Ice Beam though because it's maximized power being 90. It also helps that Ice was special in this generation of Pokemon. Ice Punch is learned at level 25. Lovely Kiss is learned at level 9 and make sure to follow what I said earlier in terms of getting a Poliwhirl. You should be able to capture a Poliwhirl up to level 30 and be fine, but I'm not sure entirely. Calm Mind is obtained after defeating Sabrina and Psychic is given to you by Mr. Psychic in Saffron City. Also for some fun, the test how strong Jinx is, you can leave Erica and have Jinx challenge her. You can practically battle the gym leaders in any order you'd like. With these moves, Jinx can have fun with Erica, Koga, Giovanni's ground types, Agatha, Bruno, Lance, and Blue's Executor, Rhydon, and Pidgeot. Jinx is the MVP of this team, and I hope you guys have fun using it, even though its design is a little bit strange. All in all, it's awesome and shreds can't do. Well, that pretty much wraps up this best team for Kanto Remastered. These Pokemon, I feel, are more of an improvement to the original best team, and we included a lot of a more in-depth team, rather than just the one that looks good on pen and paper. With the new best team mechanics, I can make future best teams look greater, along with some old ones getting revamps. Which, who knows? Maybe I will do another best team remastered in the future. Who knows, though? What do you guys think, though? Did you enjoy the team? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and Nintendo content like Shiny Hunting, Showdown Battles, Explorers of Sky, Zelda, Fire Emblem, Smash Brothers, Borderlands, you name it, I play it. Want to support me further, further in game call perks? Check out my Patreon. Dan Leone, Lady Crimson, Pal491, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Awesome Lego, Jarrett Weez Austin, and Sodden Grider did, and I want to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrian, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.